Mr. President, there's a number of women who are going to be joining me here today. There are leaders in this capital who are working each and every day, both here and back in their home states, to give more and more of their constituents a chance to succeed. So today we are here to talk about one small idea that stands to make a huge difference in the lives of our constituents and for women in particular. And that is the idea that if you are putting in 40 or 50 or 60 hours of work per week, you should be able to put food on your table and pay your bills and you won't be stuck below the poverty line. Mr. President, this idea could change the lives of millions of Americans if Cong Congress simply acted and raised the minimum wage. We need to act now because right now, one in four women, one in four women is making minimum wage today. That is 15 million American women who are making the equivalent of about two gallons of gas per hour. Are we prepared to tell them that that should be enough to support themselves and their kids? In fact, as I'm sure you'll hear repeated by others today, nearly two-thirds of those who earn minimum wage or less are women. This is coming at a time when more and more women are now dependent upon as the sole income earners in their families. And right now in cities and towns across America, there are millions of those women who are getting up at the crack of dawn for work every day. They are stuck, living in poverty. They can't save up for a car, much less a house. They can't pay for school so they can get a better skills and a better paying job. They can't even afford to provide their children with warm winter clothes or basic medical care. That's not how it's supposed to work in America, the country where you're told if you work hard and play by the rules, you can get ahead. So when we talk about the minimum wage, let's be clear. Raising the minimum wage is about bringing back our middle class. And I'm proud that in my state of Washington, we are taking the lead. We in our state, our workforce enjoys the highest minimum wage in the country. And I'd like to point out to all of our friends on the other side of the aisle, Washington State's economy has not been negatively impacted by our high minimum wage. In fact, our, country, our economy has benefited from a high minimum wage. Job growth has continued at a rate above the national average. Payrolls in our restaurants and bars have expanded due to people having more money in their pockets to spend out at dinner or a night on the town. And poverty in Washington State has trailed the national level for at least seven years now. That is why I support making the national minimum wage $10.10 for families from Washington to Wisconsin, from Massachusetts to Minnesota and Hawaii and everywhere in between. Now, it's not enough to make you rich but it is a small raise for millions of families who desperately need it. It's a small raise for mom and dads who need help. And Mr. President, beyond that, we've got to do more. Today, two-thirds of families rely on income from both parents, two-thirds. But thanks to our outdated tax code, a woman thinking about re-entering the workforce as a second earner in her family may face higher tax rates than her husband when she does that. That is unfair and it's got to change. So last week, I introduced the 21st Century Worker Tax Cut Act, which will help solve that problem by giving struggling two earner families with children a tax deduction on that new second earner's income. So my hope is that over the coming weeks, we can all come together in this chamber on behalf of millions of American women who, like my own mother, when I was growing up, became the sole breadwinner and caregiver in their families. And I hope our colleagues have gotten a sense how the current $7.25 an hour translates to a grocery trip for a family of four, or to shopping for school supplies, or even how it impacts people's daily commute. That's why we're here today, to give that mom, that dad, a fair shot at succeeding in America. And I'm proud to be joined today by a number of my uh, colleagues here in the Senate who are strong women and are fighting for women and men in their home states. I yield the floor.